The Jungle Book is a classic novel, and the animated film is a classic movie. But did you know that Mowgli's story isn't quite as fictional as you may think? Did you know that real people have been raised by animals? These are 20 people who got raised by animals in the wild. Number 20. Oksana Malaya Lest you think that I'm just making up tales about people who may have been raised by animals of various types, allow me to dispel such thoughts by telling you about Oksana Malaya. Who was she? Well, she was a girl that was found in Ukraine in 1994, and when spotted by someone in the woods, the police were called in. What they would discover was that young Oksana had a very unique family in the form of wild dogs. The dogs instinctively protected her from the officers, having accepted her into the pack. <laughs> which further goes to prove that she was indeed raised by them, that they would risk everything in order to protect her. It would take officers some time to get the dogs away from her so that they could take her in, and upon further investigation, she stated that she was likely with those dogs for about five years. To which you're likely saying, how did she end up with the dogs? Well, the story goes that she was neglected by her parents, who were terrible alcoholics, and one day she just ended up in a hovel where she'd be found by the dogs. And if you paid attention, that means that the parents didn't seem to care that their daughter was with a bunch of wild dogs and out of their sight, as the pack would eventually accept her and make her one of their own until the time where the police rescued her. At that point, she had forgotten things like speech and other human attributes. I'm betting that this wasn't the story that you were expecting, but strap in, because I've got a whole lot more. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Just wait until you hear the story behind these two photographs, because it's going to warm your heart. A young girl would be abandoned by her tribe in Africa after they were attacked by hyenas. Thankfully, she was found by a mother cheetah who took her in as one of her own. The cheetah protected and raised the girl for several months before safely escorting her to civilization. That's them on the left. On the right, you can see the girl and the cheetah now. As you can see, the pair are still very close. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. The Gazelle Boy the Gazelle Boy is yet another tale of a young one being taken in by animals, and according to this one, the Gazelle Boy, who was one who was lost by the human world at only the age of seven, eventually wound up with a pack of gazelles. He was so in tune with them, if you will, that he went about the business of eating like them, meaning that he only ate grass and other small things, and was one of the herd, despite very clearly not being one of the herd. Also, he was known to shift between between walking on two legs like a human being to being on all fours like a gazelle. He was discovered in the 1950s by an anthropologist who at first thought that he was part of a tribe that was known to mimic the behaviors of the gazelle, but obviously this was something that turned out to be a whole lot different. The man did his best to gain the trust of the herd so that he could get close to the boy, and when he did, he saw all the wounds and battle scars that came from him living as one of this herd. And just like a gazelle, he was constantly alert, even when asleep, twitching at the very basics of sounds of the world because he knew that anything could be around. Now, this is where things get a bit fantastical, because it's said that after studying him, the anthropologist came back with an army group to try and capture the boy, to which he ran at the speed of a gazelle which, as you may or may not know, is much faster than a human, and he was able to jump well over what a human is known for. So did he become one with a gazelle, or did this storyteller embellish things a little bit? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Number 18. John Sabunya 
What's important to remember is that the concept of being raised by animals in this case doesn't mean from birth, rather it means a situation that pushed somebody to being taken into the care of animals for extended periods of time. And that could mean a whole bunch of triggers, if you will. Say like a war in your home country? During the 1980s, Uganda was embroiled in a brutal civil war that was full of all kinds of horrors beyond the basic scope of the war itself. And for John Sabunya, he was literally born during that time in the war. Now, what happened to his parents is not fully known, but we do know that his father was found hanged, and as such, when he was about three years of age, he fled into the nearby jungle. Which may seem like an odd move at first, but in that time, children were often taken and forced to become soldiers, so as a result, it actually saved his life. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, he was alone for days until eventually being approached by vervet monkeys, and to his surprise, they offered him food via fruits and nuts. The monkeys were quite cautious until they decided that he posed no threat, and after about two weeks later, they let him join them as they traveled around the jungle. They would teach him how to find food and even how to climb trees, and true to being like your family, John eventually grew grew a thick sheet of hair that covered his face and body, so much so that when locals first discovered him in the jungle, they thought that he was a monster. But eventually they rescued him and shaved him and made him John once more. Number 17. Dinah Sanachar How many of you know and love the Jungle Book? You know, the story of Mowgli that's been told and retold a lot over the years, especially by Disney, and it is in many ways the picture that many have when thinking about a human being being raised by animals. But if you recall, Mowgli was raised by a wolf pack and also looked after by a panther and a bear and even some elephants depending on which story that you've read or watched. But did you know that there was a real life child who actually inspired the tale of Mowgli? That would be Dinah Sanachar. Sanachar was discovered by a group of hunters amongst some wolves in a cave in India in February of 1867, and at that time was only six years old. After being rescued by them, he was then taken to an orphanage where his wolf training could be seen in full. Key amongst this was the fact that Dinah would walk on all fours and only eat raw meat. So, you know, like a wolf. The sad thing though about the story is despite being adopted by humans at the age of six, he never really learned to be like them. For example, he never learned to speak a language, likely due to how he had to learn later than others, and that would lead to other impairments that hindered him throughout the rest of his life. So in a way, you could argue that he was actually better off with the wolves than he was with the humans, especially since as he grew up, he became a really heavy smoker and then died of tuberculosis. Number 16. Marina Chapman how about another monkey story? Marina Chapman was a girl who was also raised by monkeys, or at least that's what she claims happened. Chapman states that when she was approximately five years old, she would be taken from her village, whose name she was apparently too young to have learned, and then released for a reason she didn't understand. She spent the next several years following capuchin monkeys, and it was only later that she would be found by soldiers and brought back to the human world. And the fact is, when, the, when, uh, when they start to appear, things begin to change. By that point, just like Santa Char, she had no human language and had developed a smoking problem. Just kidding. But sadly for her, the tale didn't exactly get better, including being sold to a brothel and then becoming a slave for the mafia. Now, eventually, she did get a better life, which included marrying a man and having two children, one of whom would help her write a book called The Girl With No Name, which recalled all of her experiences in life. But the irony is, it wouldn't get published by various companies because they didn't believe that it ever actually happened. The question remains, were they right to deny the book? Well, it's a bit hard to say. We know that there are people who have been raised by animals, and we've already shown you some of them, and we have a whole lot more to come, so the timing of hers makes it hard to confirm. But what I can say is, if she really did live this horrible life, it was a hard one, and those monkeys were arguably better to her than humans ever were. Number 15. Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja 
Now I just want to make a note that while it may not be the most ideal of circumstances as a whole, if you were able to be raised by wolves, it does at least sound kind of cool because wolf packs are awesome and they know how to take care of their own. Now, I'm not alone in thinking that the wolf pack is awesome, as Marcos Rodriguez Penteo still wishes that he was among them. Marcos was sold to a hermetic goat herder at the age of seven, and after the death of the goat herder, lived alone with wolves in the Sierra Marina. Eventually, he would leave the pack, becoming a part of human society, but the catch was, as you may have guessed, that he was much older by this point, 19 years of age, which is much older than many of the young children I've talked about so far. And much like those other children who were raised by animals, he had a hard time adjusting to his new human life, though he did write a PhD paper about it and would give interviews about his experiences. However, it's not what you would expect, because in 2008, one interview that he did said that he was disappointed in human society and honestly wished that he could return to the mountains to live with the wolves once more. Think about that for a second, if you will. Because humanity loves to brag about how great that we have it, and yet this man who lived in both the primal world and the human one would rather live in a world of wolves and basic instinct than the advanced human society. That just about says it all. Number 14. Victor of Aveyron Now if you want another case of a person preferring to live with animals than they would with humans, you need to look no further than Victor of Aveyron. He was a boy born around 1788, and after being neglected by his parents, would leave for the nearby woods of France. While we don't know exactly what animals raised him, he was very animalistic in nature and how he handled himself, and as a result, he was eventually captured by hunters and then would begin a long string of escapes back into the woods. Eight times total, in fact. The reason why he's famous, though, is because unlike many of these other feral children, he was one that was studied the most, both in terms of intelligence and to assess exactly how adept that he was at being in the wild. Such as one time when the person who was studying him had him fully undress and play in the snow, which is a weird and maybe even perverted tactic. But to his surprise, Victor was more than fine with the cold, proceeding to enjoy the snow even though he was exposed to the elements. Through his training, if you will, they developed new ways and techniques to teach those who had delayed development or no development at all in terms of learning what it means to be a human. And to be clear, he never did get fully trained to be a human again, but the attempt and his story are one that definitely got people talking. Number 13. Girl Mowgli Really breaking the bank with that name there, huh? Yep, she was known as Girl Mowgli, and that's good enough, I guess. She's also yet another tale of neglect, as her parents abandoned her due to, apparently, physical and mental disabilities, so she was just left in the woods. But the twist came in that she would then be taken in by monkeys and raised by them until she was eight and rediscovered by humans in India. Local officials told the Guardian that they thought family members of the girl had been aware that she wasn't able to speak and that they may have abandoned her near a forest road. If she was living with the monkeys, it would have been for only a few days and not for a long time. But even if it was only a few days, that's still a horrible act to commit on a child. And it goes to show that capabilities of monkeys for compassion, because it means that they took the young girl in without asking any major questions. Remember, monkeys are smart. And versus the humans that abandoned her for her disabilities, and some even say for her gender. People think that the animals are savages at times. All this just goes to prove that the circumstances of a story are equally as important as everything else, and the result of things might not be what you're expecting. Number 12. Orn Sambath Now here's a story that I'll understand if you have a hard time believing at first, because the tale of this person is about a man who was well and truly raised by a snake. Yes, a snake. You know, that thing that slithers around on the ground and hisses and sometimes rattles and could potentially kill you with one bite? 
Apparently, one of those raised a kid named Orn. Or at least, that's a certain way of interpreting it, because this is not a tale of a boy who would be found in the woods or the jungle by a snake and then raised. Rather, it's the tale of one who was given a pet snake when he was very young and the snake and him became rather inseparable. Now, to give you a bit more context, the family got the snake when the boy was only three months old. <laughs> and they basically grew up together, thus forming a bond that makes them so close. At one point, the snake was more than happy to sleep under the mattress where the boy slept and wouldn't leave it without the boy. There are so many questions that I've got for this one, not the least of which is what parent in their right mind would have a snake as a pet for their child at only the age of three months old? Granted, the species was one that didn't have venom, so death by snake was kind of unlikely, but the danger was still there. And so it's no small wonder that when the boy was just five years old and the snake was much bigger, that people were somewhat horrified by a picture of them hugging because they obviously didn't know the story. And even if they did, it might not have quelled their fears. Number 11. Cambodian Jungle Woman now here's one that's much more on the nose, if you will, because I'm going back to Cambodia to another girl or woman who was lost in the jungles and not found for another 18 years. But there are a few twists to this tale, not the least of which is that after being found, she was rediscovered by a family who claimed to be her biological relatives. According to them, when she was nine years old, she was tending to their buffalo when something happened and she suddenly vanished. However, that's not the only twist because there was another family, this time from Vietnam, who claimed that she was their long lost daughter and that she closely resembled her father, a Vietnamese man. It also should be noted that the woman, regardless of her true heritage, did try to run back to the jungles where she lived for so long without the prying eyes of humans. It's honestly a very sad tale when you see how it all went down because regardless of whom her real family is, they lost her and and left her for dead. And then she found a way to survive on her own, no telling what kind of animals actually helped her, but it does make sense that she did have help for 18 years before being rediscovered. Just as telling though is that if you look at the pictures of her with her family or even by herself, she doesn't at all look happy or even comfortable, hence why she tried to go back to the jungle but was always recaptured before she could get too deep. Number 10. Vanya Yudin. Now, if I told you that Vanya Yudin was also known as the Russian Bird Boy, you'd have a lot of questions, but also a few guesses as to what the nickname means. Sadly, it's not a fun story about how a flock of birds would find Vanya in the wild and then raise them. Rather, it's one about a boy who was literally forced to be a bird in order to survive. His mother well and truly locked him up in a room that was filled with wild and domesticated birds. He was never spoken to by his mother and thus never treated like a human being. The result was him learning how to be a bird boy by watching and listening to the birds in the room. So much so that when he was finally discovered and taken from his mother, he would only speak in chirps and would flap his arms as if they were wings. His case was so bad that he was taken to an asylum as a result of what all had happened to him, which honestly says a lot, wouldn't you say? He was abused and treated like an animal, and the only place that they could take him was that of an asylum. It would be later reported that he was taken to a more caring facility for rehabilitation, but whether he honestly got the care that he needed and deserved, and whether he was able to become fully human again, nobody can really say. Number 9. Tryon Calderar Tryon Caldera is another young child who found more comfort in the company of animals, in this case wild dogs, than he did with his own parents. He ran away from home at just four years old. In order to evade his father, who was incredibly abusive, he then managed to survive for those three whole years in the harsh wilderness, and it's believed that the packs of dogs that roamed the area took him under their wing and gave him a warm place to sleep at night. Eventually, he would be found in a cardboard box of all things and was taken back to his mother, whom we assume was not as bad as his father. However, as you might have guessed, 
the dog in him was still pretty strong, and as a result, he almost died getting hit by a car after he went to chase a cat. Now, I promise I'm not making this up, and let's not lose the whole message here. This is a boy that found comfort and shelter and support via wild dogs who helped him to live for years, and that in itself is a pretty cool dog pack. Number 8. Vicente Cacao now, I'll admit I'm a little confused about this one because Vicente Cacao is known as the wolf child, but he was apparently raised by cougars, which are cats. So why do they call him the wolf child when he's clearly a cat child or maybe even a cougar boy or something like that? The villagers of Puerto Varas in Chile began to realize that they lacked food in their pantries, chickens and eggs in the coops, and not knowing what was going on, they looked to find what or who was responsible for all of it. That's when they would eventually discover Vicente. When they found him in the jungle, he was a 10-year-old boy who walked on all fours and was covered in hair, making many of them double-take, no doubt, as they surely weren't expecting that. So what did they do with him? Well, because of his crimes and the fact that he acted like an animal, they put him in jail. Number 7. Bello Now we head to Nigeria, where a young boy named Bello would be found and rescued by those who had found him in the care of a group of chimpanzees. As for whom Bello belonged to, it's suspected that he was part of one of the nomadic tribes that go throughout the country, mentally and physically disabled with a misshapen forehead, sloping right shoulder, and protruding chest. He was probably abandoned by his parents because of his disabilities, which again just proves how much better that animals can be at times at accepting those who are in need of help because they were more than happy to take the child in and raise him as one of their own for about a year and a half before people discovered him and tried to get him out of there. Now granted, nobody exactly knows how the chimps found the boy, but they did, and they did their best to take care of him no matter what. Number 6. Tippy de Grey now we have a rather fun twist on the formula, because Tippy de Grey was indeed raised by animals, but another way you could put it is that she was raised alongside of animals. Candy? Come on. She was the daughter of some photographers who lived in the bush of Africa for 10 years, and during that childhood in Namibia, she then befriended animals that she lived amongst, which included a 28-year-old elephant named Abu, a leopard nicknamed J&B, some lions, giraffes, a banded mongoose, an ostrich, meerkats, a cheetah, a caracal, snakes, a giant bullfrog, and some chameleons. It's quite a collection of animal friends. Because of her experience she would be the subject of many books, movies, and documentaries, and she's spoken out many a time about how people need to do better by animals and nature. And given her connection with all the animals that she had during her early life, it's not really hard to see why she would feel that way. Number 5. Ivan Mushikov Ivan Mushikov is another interesting case of being saved by animals, but in a way that's much more street than anything else. He lived near Moscow, but for a time was actually homeless, and that's where he met a pack of stray dogs that would help him by giving him warmth at night and occasionally food. The new pack grew a bond, and thus he would take the dogs to the local bakery at times to beg for food so that they could survive. By his own admission, those dogs were the only family that he had, and while he would be eventually rescued by police and taken into proper care, he would forever admit that those dogs saved his life and he owed them a debt. Number 4. Marie Angelique Mimi LeBlanc well, that's not a long name at all, now is it? Many of these raised by animal stories sadly have a very similar ending, in that it's hard for the newly returned children or adults to adapt to life as humans again. However, for Marie Angelique Mimé LeBlanc, that was not the case. Or at least, if you believe her tale, it's not. Long story short, she apparently spent 10 years on her own and with animals in the wilds before finally being found and brought back to the 
the world. That's where she eventually got a lot of attention and a whole lot of nicknames because of her adventures on her own. She apparently was a rags to riches story, and it was one that drew a lot of skepticism from people who think that part or all of her wild story was actually false, but no one will likely ever know the truth. Number 3. Kamala and Amala Here's another story that may or may not be true, depending on whom you want to believe, because Kamala and Amala were said to be wolf children that were discovered by clergymen, eventually brought back to the world of humans in India. The catch? Well, he was the only one who could actually confirm that they were raised by wolves. He further claimed in his diary that, at the orphanage, the two girls showed wolf-like behavior that was typical for feral children. They would not allow themselves to be dressed, they scratched and bit people who tried to feed them, they rejected cooked food, and walked on all fours. The girls were mostly nocturnal, having an aversion to sunshine, and could see very well in the dark, and they also exhibited an acute sense of smell and enhanced ability to hear. But whether or not he was telling the truth, well, that's for you to decide in the comments section below. Number 2. Peter the Human Pet now there's a moniker that just screams, this ought to be a great story. Also known as Peter the Wild Boy, he would be found in the Hertzwald Forest in Germany by a party of hunters led by George I. Yes, that George I. What's more, he was then taken back to Great Britain on the order of the princess. But why? Well, because she apparently took an interest in Peter and wanted to oversee his education. She would fail miserably, but he did become a key part of their lives, even having a portrait of himself made. And as for the human pet part, at one point he did run away, and when he was found they made a collar for him so that he could never get too far again. Number 1. Chicken Boy Sunjit Kumar was tied to a bed in a rest home for 20 years after being found in the middle of a road pecking like a chicken. Kumar's grandfather had locked him up in a chicken coop after his parents died. That's just sad, no matter who you are. Eventually, he would be rescued and taken to a behavioral specialist so that they could undo his chicken mindset and help him to be a human again. But the fact that his own family did that to him is terrifying and that it took him so long to get out out is equally as bad. And that's all from the realm of people who have been raised by animals in the wild. Are you stunned by the fact that there have been 20 or more people, both old and young, who have been raised by animals in some capacity during their lives? And which of these tales did you find most unbelievable? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also be sure to click on the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.